I wanted to briefly talk about Ryan Salem or Salome. We we still don't exactly know how to pronounce his name. Who was an FTX executive? He was the co CEO of FTX Digital Markets. Was to my surprise, sentenced to 7.5 years in prison, which was more than the government's recommendation of five to seven years. I mean, Sam Bankman Fried, for example, the government recommended he be sentenced to, I think it was like about 50 years in prison, and he ultimately got 25 years. And it was the same judge that sentenced Ryan Salem. So I was expecting Ryan to get less than the government recommended, but he got more. Ryan Salem, ultimately, I don't think was actually aware, like there was no evidence that it ever came out that he was actually aware or involved in the actual use of customer funds. He was charged with operating an unlicensed money transmitting business and contributions. And making, yeah, and making unlawful political contributions, basically being a straw donor, both of which are obviously problematic. But personally, my main issue with the entire FTX fraud was the use of customer funds. And it doesn't look like Ryan Salem was aware of the use of customer funds during the entirety of like FTX's run. And when he did find out in November, he was actually the first person to blow the whistle and alert Bahamian authorities about FTX's use of customer funds. But at no point like was there ever any evidence that he was aware of it prior. Even Caroline Ellison in like leaked audio when she was asked who was aware of the use of customer funds, she named Sam Bakeman Fried, obviously herself, Gary Wong and Nishad Singh. But Ryan Salem, like it never it no one ever claimed that he was aware of the use of customer funds. So I personally think that seven point five years is pretty drastic. Oh, I, I forgot to mention that Ryan Salem finally followed me on Twitter and we've been talking in DMs. I don't know if we're going to do an actual recorded conversation because he said he doesn't want to get remanded, obviously, but we've been chatting. Mm. He seems quite nice. He seems quite... <laughs> uh, he, he, doesn't wanna, he doesn't want to pull a Sam and just go wanna, on. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want to pull a Sam. I know that some people are like, yeah, put him in prison for life. Obviously, he was at FTX. He's obviously a criminal. But a lot of FTX employees were not aware of the use of customer funds. And I think some of them like got screwed over more than... I don't want to say more than customers, but a lot of them like literally left their salaries in FTX and like stood behind it and put their entire reputations behind FTX. Mm. I think that Ryan Salem simply being an FTX executive doesn't mean that he was aware of what was going on. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I feel like what customers only care about or mostly care about is like, did their actions make me lose more money? Like, were they part of what caused harm for me? Right. <clears throat> so Maybe that money that, you know, operating an unlicensed money transmitting business was a big part of that. I think he like started a company and then it, it, there was some weird shady stuff going on. But like, mm -hmm. is he the reason, right? Like, or is he the main reason? I will say that obviously it turned out that a lot of the political contributions did turn out to be customer funds. I think that he made a lot of political contributions, but I don't think he was aware that those political contributions, that the source of the funds were uh, FTX customer funds so yeah then i'm kind of like i don't know how i feel about that ethically yeah i mean like weren't they making contributions to really sway politics right and yeah. so is that a crime in and of itself i mean i think a, that's what lobbyists do like that's a normal sure. thing well, you know, this is something funny because Ryan Salem has been tweeting up a storm, which some people have a problem with, obviously. <laughs> but hey, I, I, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's quite entertaining. But he quote tweeted this tweet, which says, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong says that Coinbase has donated $25 million to vote anti-crypto politicians out of Congress. So what is the difference there between... I, I, this might be completely stupid, and I'm going to be very clear that I'm obviously no fucking lawyer, and I know nothing about what constitutes illegal political donations or political fraud. I don't know anything about this. But, like, you know, if Brian Armstrong is donating $25 million to vote anti crypto politicians out of Congress, I mean, isn't that what FTX was doing? They were essentially making these political donations on both sides of the aisle, obviously, but to sort of get favorable crypto regulation. So, I, I do you know. The distinction here, Aaron, when when something becomes illegal and becomes fraud, or is this a stupid question? Because because Ryan Salem quote tweeted that with just like <laughs> the Pablo Escobar, like just like I guess I'll just be here waiting. I love I love that meme. Yeah, I love that meme. 
and I think that to some degree, I mean, I can see some validity in, that, in him being like, why is Brian Armstrong able to publicly state that he's is that like donating 25 million to vote anti-crypto politicians out of Congress when I'm going to prison for essentially doing the same thing? Ryan Salem himself co- contributed, I think, $24 million to mm. pro-crypto politicians. Obviously, so, the big problem here is that like it looks like the source of these this stuff was FTX customer funds. That's where the big problem lies. But it just seems as though he wasn't aware of that at the time the contributions were being made. Quick pause, but have you heard that the flavored air category is quickly becoming the leading alternative to vaping and smoking? It's a whole new movement towards better habits led by the sponsor of today's video, Fume. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device that draws flavor into your mouth and fills the void that ditching a bad habit can leave. Fume does not contain any nicotine, so it's not addictive and does not require batteries so you'll never have to charge it. Flavored air isn't like vaping. There's no actual vapor, so you can use it anywhere you go. And if vapor was compared to sticky soda, Fume cores are closer to herbal tea. Fume has tons of delicious flavors to choose from, like crisp mint or orange vanilla. And with Flavored Air, you can satisfy your oral fixation through a passive diffusion system that utilizes no electronics, vapor, or combustion. Personally, I love the crisp mint flavor. It's more flavorful than I expected, and it feels really refreshing in my mouth. All of the flavors are non-toxic, so it's a great guilt-free alternative. And it looks awesome, too. You can feel the weighted, high-quality design, which was actually made for fidgeting. It can help calm anxiety with magnets, snaps, and clicks. Even the airflow dial makes this cute little click very satisfying. Fume also continuously invests in third-party studies to ensure the safety of their products, and Fume is backed by doctors in the U.S. Fume has served over 300,000 customers, and you can be the next success story. For a limited time, use my code Tiffany Fong to get a free Fume base when you order the journey pack. It's the all-new magnetic stand for your Fume device. Head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com, and use code Tiffany Fong, or scan the QR code on screen to get your free Fume base when you order the journey pack today. Thank you so much to Fume, and back to the video. I mean, good old Google says that uh, Salami made donations and other people. Th- sorry, it's a bad joke. I shouldn't make. I shouldn't fuck with his name. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can say I'm Salami. So, I'm so immature, yo. So, so Google says that uh, uh, Salame made donations in other people's names, supposedly, or that's alleged. Um, so basically, I think maybe the argument is that like this was all part of Sam Bakeman Freed's scheme. So basically, that he was a straw donor. Um, so, like, him making contributions in his name was mostly to further SBF's sort of, like, political visions. So I guess that would be maybe the argument here. Again, I'm no lawyer, but is that what it seems like it would be? It says it's illegal for corporations to contribute to federal candidates, but I feel like corporate Coinbase is a cor- corporation, so that wouldn't... Yeah. I don't know enough about, like, <laughs> the law around this, but I know that Sam, in conversation, would always say that he didn't think that any of his political donations were illegal because of Citizens United. And apparently that Citizens United basically made it legal for corporations to donate unlimited amounts to politicians. I'm not going to pretend to know a lot about this. Do you know about this, Aaron? I know nothing about that. I don't know what went down. I feel like a lot of what happened went is happening behind the scenes, and we're never going to know. Like, why is Ryan Salome getting prosecuted this heavily for political contributions? Like it, it does it. I I'm going to agree with you. Seven and a half years makes no sense to me. I personally think it's crazy. I mean, largely because obviously Sam Bankman Freed did not plead guilty and ever take responsibility and ownership of what he did, which I still think is kind of annoying that he never pled guilty or took ownership. Ryan Salem actually pled guilty. And I thought that pleading guilty would shorten his sentence because he's basically taking responsibility of like, um, operating an unlicensed money transmitting business or uh, whatever. So I thought that might shorten his sentence in the same way that CZ only got four months, even though he obviously operated a much larger company that had some clear, you know, legal issues, uh, only got four months in prison. And Ryan Salem was not even like in the main inner circle of FTX, which is why I was, I was expecting him to get like, I don't know, honestly, I was thinking maybe like under a year, like, but mm-hmm. uh, it's crazy to me because so I thought that CZ got such a short sentence because he pled guilty and agreed to pay, I think, $4 billion in fines. Ryan Salem, I forgot to mention, even agreed to forfeit $1.5 billion. So he, that's, he agreed to forfeit $1.5 billion, still got 7.5 years after pleading guilty. I think that one contributing factor is the fact that he did not testify against Sam Bakeman-Fried during Sam's trial. And 
I don't know to what degree his testimony was needed because they obviously had the inner circle there who testified, Caroline Ellison, Gary Wong, and Nishad Singh. But I think mm. the crazy thing is that like I've spoken to some lawyers who have who were former SDNY prosecutors and they say that it's very likely that Caroline Ellison, Gary Wong, and Nishad Singh will walk away with zero prison time because they testified against Sam Bakeman Freed and were able to help put Sam behind bars. But because Ryan Salem, who was a much lesser figure in the FTX debacle, did not testify against Sam Bakeman Freed, I personally feel like he's like being particularly punished for not testifying. I don't mm. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I just think it's wild. Yeah, it is wild. I wonder if Ryan was given the opportunity to testify and he declined it. Do you know? Yeah, from our DMs, we didn't specifically talk about that. He basically said that he didn't have anything to offer without lying. But I mean, I I, I would assume that Ryan was offered the option to testify. I mean, if I don't, I don't know, but he did not testify against Sam Bakeman Freed, so I don't know if he's just being fucked for not um not not cooperating it against Sam. But crazy. Yeah. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Like any of you guys who are watching this, I want to hear if you guys think this was surprisingly lo long a sentence, surprisingly short, fair. And I'm also curious if you guys have any questions for Ryan Salem because we're in contact now. I don't know if he's willing to do a recorded talk, but we're in contact. So if you have questions for Ryan, I'm curious to ask him those questions. Yeah, that'll be a good talk. Hopefully he agrees to talk with you. Be fun. It would be fun. Aaron, I miss you. Oh, I miss you too. Well, I hope you have a good time in LA, whatever you're doing. You know man friend you're what <laughs> i'm seeing a man friend a man friend a man, what? a man friend a man friend, friend. <laughs> well best of luck oh it's gonna do it because oh. guys does anyone have any well we're not on a live but if anyone thinks oh. we should talk about anything else let us know all right i miss you Oh, I miss you too. I love you, honey. I love you too. Bye. Bye. What do you got in your hand? What is that? Oh, this is my fume. Cool. Cool. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will leave Aaron Bennett's links down below in the description box. And I again just wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Fume. You can go to tryfume.com. That's tryfum.com slash Tiffany Fong to get your free fume base when you order the journey pack today. Love you, Fume. And I love you all so very much. And I'll talk to you all very, very soon. Bye.